Og found himself awake. As he slowly regained consciousness, the deep dream seemed to fade from the ogren's mind like the morning dew. He tried to remember what happened. It seemed so important for some reason. But the dream was gone. Og shook his head and sat up on the large cot. Medics and surviving hospital staff were handing out meals to the wounded. Og was used to being on campaign and having to survive on cold rations. So the hospital food was... Well, at least it was hot. But it wasn't so long ago that Og was enjoying a nice, juicy grok steak. As Og ate, and the other members of his squad ate along with him, he kept looking around in hopes of catching a glimpse of the space marines they had fought with. But he saw nothing. But who he did see was Junior Lieutenant Carter, who looked like he'd been up for some time. Good morning, Og. Og saluted. Morning, sir. At ease. Uh, finish your food. Og did not argue and continued his meal. So, I have a question. What is it, Og? How come there were bad men here? I thought Polis loved the Emperor. Well, I must admit, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I've been getting pieces of it from the PDF units and their officers. Apparently, there had been labor disputes going on for quite some time. Uh, menials were upset that they weren't being treated fairly. Uh, strikes, riots, protests, all of it spread across the planet. The governor's solution to the problem was a swift crackdown on all civil disobedience. I think this one might have been the reason that he agreed to host the Imperial Navy at great expense to himself. Perhaps he thought our presence would discourage any unrest as he consolidated power. I think it's pretty stupid for the bad men to try to fight while we're here. We'll win this in no time. That's the thing, Og. I still have no idea what's going on with our fleet. We haven't had any communication with them. I don't know anything about anything. This might have been an isolated attack in the section of Polis, or it might be planet-wide. I have no idea. There's no communication outside of short-range Voxcasters. All information networks and data synapse hubs have been disrupted. Elements of the PDF and Arbites have been able to take control of the southeast corner of the Titan District. Beyond that, though, I have no idea what's going on elsewhere. But what I do know is that this was a highly coordinated attack. And I also suspect this is a much bigger rebellion, unlikely to just be local. Why else would they make a highly coordinated attack on the Titan District and provoke the Imperial military itself. Lieutenant Carter was mostly talking to himself and trying to sort things out in his own mind. Og didn't understand everything he was saying, but he nodded and continued to eat his food. So nobody knew what was going on or why things were happening. That was as much as Og understood. It was a familiar feeling for the Ogren. Stuff like this always happened when the worst parts of a campaign were going on. Nobody knows what's going on or why, which suited Og fine. It was as if he suddenly was on the same mental level as everyone else. Where are the space marines? Uh, the white scars? Uh, I think they left not long after you went to sleep. I wonder if space marines ever sleep. But I think... They must be making some kind of strike against the enemy, or trying to learn more about the situation. I, I don't know. The Emperor's angels certainly don't need to explain themselves to someone like me. I hope I get to see them again. Space Marines are big and fight good. And those ones are really fast, too. <sighs> Honestly, who knows, Og? Who knows? With everything that's happened... I don't think I could be surprised by anything at this point. Anyway, I have to go. Uh, we're having an officers' meeting to try to figure out who's in command, and maybe we can actually get a properly organized response to these attacks. You stay here. Don't let the other Ogrens wander off. 
Yes, sir. I, I could do that. Og finished his food and then kept a very careful watch over the remaining Ogren. They didn't seem to be in any rush to leave their beds or wander off. Many of them were very seriously wounded. Of all the Ogren, Og was one of the least injured. He was able to move about with only some minor pain. Some of his durability was likely owed to his sturdy cybernetic components. Overall, Og had suffered a few cuts and bruises. Some were a little nasty, but they had all been cleaned and bandaged, and Og was more or less ready to fight again if necessary. After a little while, Lieutenant Carter walked back to the Ogrens with his face white as a sheet. He sat down near Og and sighed. So, um, who's the new boss? Well, apparently I am, Og. Apparently I am now the commander of the Titan District Irregulars. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Og the Ogren Returns. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that one day you might find yourself suddenly in command of hundreds of men that you may or may not be prepared to lead. If you have not subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about Imperial forces dealing with menial rebellions orchestrated by mysterious figures. If you would like to support me, links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring are down below in the description. And finally, if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Og the Ogren Returns playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No man out.